Hi guys, welcome back to a brand new video on the channel. It's Marvel Contest of Champions and it's all about Dormammu. Now I have seen a few videos on getting him down, killing him off with regards to boss battles in preparation style and I've seen a lot of people kind of go back on the kind of champions that we were going to use as boss killers. And I think it's the, the main thing to kind of give a, an idea that no one is essentially right when it comes to doing a boss battle with Dormammu. It's all about certain things that are going to make certain champions more, I'd say, helpful for the situation. And that's what we're going to explore in this video. Unfortunately, when we got down to the bare bones of going for a boss battle, we noticed that with dimensional anchor, heal block, kind of pushes out certain champions and kind of puts others in greater stead. For example, taking out the fact that Ultron would be really helpful, except the heal block being a bit of an issue. Against all that energy is going to be, you know, a piece de resistance for gaining back health. When it comes to dimensional anchor, characters like Mordo would come into effect with putting that soul barb on, punishing the enemy for gaining that that dimensional anchor and those buffs that are constantly present. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to take on the boss battle because I had work at this time and our guys are very good. You know, we've got guys that are kind of all around the world in our alliance in Odin and uh, our, our leader was able to take out the boss with a winter soldier of all characters. But I did ask what the strategies were and he was just quite modest in saying punching and obviously taking away the uh, like the power, power stealing. But um, our leader of our alliance is a badass of a player. So Ultron was indeed one of the champions I was hoping to use and I thought, oh, this is going to be great. But considering the fact on the last season of AQ, there was a hill block on, it seemed fairly likely that they were going to implement that as well. Obviously, the idea behind Limba does mean that there's a limitation against the fact of uh, using Ultron. I really like getting a load of bleed and then applying in an L1, obviously, for the sake of Dormammu's immunities. Uh, yeah, L1 is not uh, is not an, an option because of, obviously, well, Dormammu can't bleed. But it isn't the only kind of thing that's kind of noticeable about Dormammu because, hey, he can't bleed, he can't poison, but at the same time, he can incinerate. So that's another thing that's kind of going for him. There's so many different champions you can choose. There's uh, Captain America World War II. I've seen loads of different videos where loads of different champions are kind of given a, a, a real push. I've been experimenting with a few characters which I think are a bit different to what people are expecting. Another one of those characters that people will say, oh, this is a go-to character again is, is magic. And yeah, there is that element of power steel uh, or kind of power lock even, which make the char that makes the character like super effective for just kind of continuing on the battle but that's applying with stuff like limbo is very good as well and very helpful for the situation based on you taking damage unfortunately i don't and i'm pretty certain limbo doesn't work with the fact of the heal block heal block is a big issue when it comes to dormammu two scrappy fights here with uh with ultron and uh and magic very disappointing however though i tried out some other champions so Phoenix. Why did I choose Phoenix? And apart from, well, again, not playing it particularly well, I did find that building up stuff with the guys to incinerate was quite, quite good. Obviously, keeping the character down to an L1 was advisable because I didn't want to kind of have um, a spasm finger, as I'd call it, spasm finger, trying to evade those projectile energy blasts of whatever they are, uh, dimensional fire or whatever. But um, I was considering the fact of incinerate and just really kind of playing about with stuff. That was the disappointing side of things is that Rise of the Phoenix is, again, non-negotiable because of the heal block. So that is something of an issue. And uh, there we go. There's a good example of three of the blasts being avoided quite, quite well by myself. But it is an effort to kind of be more on it. And it is a scrappy fight that I'm having at the moment. I took my incinerate theory a bit further and tried out a character like Agent Venom. As you can see, we're applying an incinerate. Not as effective based on the fact that the enemy has mastery set up in a certain way that, uh, yeah, there's going to be a health regeneration there. But uh, I was trying as well to kind of see if tenacity was able to take off things with regards to um, 
soul bonds but it wasn't able to do what i thought it was going to do so that was a bit disappointing but we continue on okay i know what you're thinking and bear with me on this one the reason that i've gone for nightcrawler as an as a kind of an option to go against dormammu and it wasn't a great start i'm not gonna lie however though once i kind of got a bit of a rhythm by it and this was the key point here if you're struggling with evading out certain things like the specials like the projectiles from the l2 or even the pace from the L1, or even the heavy attack. Having a character like Nightcrawler in your roster is just so effective for the bamf, the dexterity, the evading, and allows for some really interesting and quite articulate. Look, here we go. Boom, 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 boom. Bamfing away quite, quite nicely. And I don't think I drop much with regards to health points with this. It was just an experimentation. Just I thought, oh, I'll just throw this out there. And even though obviously the character doesn't bleed in his deep wounds, I was I was finding that a significant amount of damage is still being done. Now this character is 440 at the moment and is a character that I will take up to 550 very shortly. However though, just for the purpose of this video, it was just nice to see the extent of bamfing and kind of avoiding which allowed for not being hit too much by projectiles or the projectile energy and just getting away from the situations and, and being, even though it was quite cowardly, um, hey, if it's stupid and it works, hey, it ain't stupid. That's what a, a wise man once said. So we just finish off the fight. And yeah, into the parry and boom, there we go. And if all else fails, just go for an awakened Dormammu. I'm very lucky to have him at 5 star. This is only a rank 2. I am so hoping for some more mystic tier 4 class catalysts. I seem to be, that's the only thing I don't, don't seem to be getting at the moment. Hopefully in the coming weeks or maybe month we're we'll able to get loads more and then we'll see him ranked up. Now I do like applying in that, you know, you, you put in the uh, you detonate the the bond and then it's um, you know it's just straight in there for a good chunk of damage, can be anything really. There used to be like a huge amount on it, but yeah. Power burning, power locking, it's all there, it's all good. Obviously, disappointing side as you can. You could put like degeneration on or degenerating. There's loads of ways to kind of play out this this character. It's going to be super effective, just as long as you don't get the enemy doing a uh, L3. You're going to be happy as anything. Okay, tips with Dormammu. Number one, use characters you're comfortable with. Now, people will say, you know, what the hell do you mean by that? It should be always the best characters that are rated the highest to be the ones that you're comfortable with. Well, not necessarily. Obviously, our leader used a Winter Soldier, a five-star awakened Winter Soldier against Dormammu. People would say, that's a stupid idea. Again, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. Number two, negative effects. Now, not many negative effects on the character. Obviously, he doesn't bleed, he doesn't poison. So, there's not really anything to kind of grab, except, obviously, from degenerating the character, putting soul barbs from Mordo on him, and also incinerating him. These are options. They're not concrete Number three, I've kind of put Extreme Evaders, and this kind of applies mainly to Nightcrawler, but also in a lighter sense could could apply for characters like Black Widow. Maybe characters that have got evading and a significant amount of damage output can really be quite helpful. I think, think Nightcrawler seemed to prove himself to be a good champion when it came to avoiding out those quite difficult SP1s and the even more difficult SP2. Number four is think outside the box. Why should you think outside the box? Well, it's largely don't follow anything that's, that seems to be the best option. There may be something that may be a non-logical champion, which could be more effective. A lot of people are using Quake, and that seems to be a good fit. Now, obviously, we didn't say about that, or anybody in the YouTube community said about that, within the last 48 hours. So that is something where you've got to think outside the box to kind of think well is that champion going to be more effective the class bonus is there so therefore that will be better that character has a good damage output signature ability is good as well think outside the box number five look at avoiding the sp1 don't try and build them up to a, an sp2 because that is where it's going to be a little bit more difficult it's easier to do three and get back out of there it's like three kind of light evades like three swipes to the left 
then doing a watch for projectiles which you know some people will find that easier you know they're crazy but they'll do it however you have seen it in the video so far we did a, a quick quick kind of demo of me doing some evades with that so it is possible it's just not as easy finally number six well that's just really there for a bit of a joke because a lot of people have said in uh, comment sections, they've said on the community site, they've said in the Facebook site that, uh, hey, if all else fails, just use Star-Lord. And there's no, there's no right or wrong answer with that. That is um, a go-to champion for a lot of end game or kind of big boss takedowns. So, hey, you know, if you've got Star-Lord, that may be an option for you if you've got him. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that like button, subscribe for more Marvel Contest of Champions content. And one thing I want to find out in the comment section, so put some comments in, is what champion did you use to take down Dormammu? Or what champions would you suggest to take down Dormammu? Because everyone has a different opinion. Obviously, I've given you different options which can be used. But theoretically and putting into practice, what have you used? So uh, be good to hear from you. Thanks very much for watching this video and I'll catch you on the flip side for another one. Bye bye.